Who are you talking about? No, 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 no. Can't do that. You got to watch. Tune in January 7th. Yes. Only some of the documents have been released. About 900 of them. They've been unsealed. Uh, it, was, I, it was cute. I was just saying. It was cute. I was just saying. It's just less cutaways. You know what I mean? That's all. And that, that's so cool. That now I, I know, like, there's someone out there watching going, all right, there's a, the door's open. And before we start talking about anything, we want to start with facts. And Sonny, I'm going to go to you for this. And I want the world to Google it. Like, Google that. And not for nothing, big night for AAPI, right? Come on, all day, you know what I mean? That's what it is. For this information, there was some sort of list that everybody thought was going to come out. And who's on the list? You hear me say that? I had to say it. it kind of I want everybody to know. I'm like, I'm going to still drop some Filipino in this. In this night tonight? Whoopi stands up for Joe. All right, so picture this. The Golden Globes are over. The confetti has settled. But the drama is just getting started. Joe, the man with the mic, stirred up a whole pot of controversy with his monologue. Now in the midst of this comedy storm, Whoopi Goldberg steps up like a superhero, cape and all, to defend her fellow funny man. Whoopi, being the co-host of The View and a seasoned award show veteran herself, didn't just watch from the sidelines. No, she waded right into the battlefield, standing shoulder to shoulder with Joe Coy. She's got his back, and she's not afraid to let everyone know it. In her trademark unfiltered style, Whoopi didn't mince words. She straight up said these hosting gigs are brutal. I mean, can you imagine standing up there, bearing your comedic soul to a room full of A-listers, each with their own set of expectations and egos? It's like walking a tightrope over a pit of hungry lions. But here's the thing. Whoopi gets it. She knows the ropes, the pitfalls, and the pressure cooker that is hosting an award show. She empathizes with Joe Coy, acknowledging that these gigs are not for the faint of heart. If you haven't been in these rooms before, it's like being thrown into the lion's den without a map or a snack. And you can tell Whoopi's not just paying lip service. This isn't some generic defense. She genuinely understands the struggle, the nerves, and the hit-or-miss nature of these gigs. It's like she's saying, hey, cut the guy some slack. It's a tough gig and not everyone can ace it on the first try. No. Who are you talking about? No, 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 no. <laughs> Can't do that. You got to watch. Tune in January 7th. Yes. Only some of the documents have been released. About 900 of them. They've been unsealed. Uh, it, was, I, it was cute. I was just saying. It was cute. I was just saying. It's just less cutaways. You know what I mean? That's all. And that, that's so cool. That now I, I know, like, there's someone out there watching going, all right, there's a, the door's open. And before we start talking about anything, we want to start with facts. And Sonny, I'm going to go to you for this. And I want the world to Google it, like Google that. And not for nothing, big night for AAPI, right? Come on, all day, you know what I mean? That's what it is. For this information, there was some sort of list that everybody was thought was going to come out. And who's on the list? Differing opinions on monologue. Picture a table with a bunch of opinionated co-hosts, and right in the middle of it all is Joe Coy's Golden Globes monologue. Buckle up because it's a roller coaster of views. First up, we've got Sarah Haynes. She's like Joe Coy's comedy guardian angel, swooping in to defend him from the naysayers. Sarah's got this heartfelt vibe going on, feeling bad for Joe and all. It's like she's saying, hey, cut the guy some slack. He's just trying to make us laugh. But here's the real kicker. She goes all in on the importance of protecting comedians as national treasures. Now that's a title you don't hear every day. It's like Joe Coy is this rare gem, and Sarah's here to make sure nobody chips away at his comedic brilliance. But wait, there's a twist in this tale. Enter Anna Navarro, the co-host who's not exactly riding the same comedy train as Whoopi and Sarah. She's not hopping on the Joe Coy defense bandwagon. Nope, not her style. She's got her own take on the matter, and it's clear she's not throwing confetti in agreement with Whoopi's support. It's like having a heated debate at the dinner table, opinions flying like mashed potatoes across the room. It's the clash of the co-hosts, the collision of contrasting views, and it's all happening right there on The View. One says, protect Joe Coy at all costs, while the other might be thinking, eh, not my cup of comedic tea. It's the beauty of diverse perspectives, the spice that keeps the talk show pot stirring. I think it's just great to be on that stage, and that's I think that right there is indirectly ins inspiring enough. Did you hear me say that? I had to say it. I want everybody to know. I'm like, I'm going to still drop some Filipino in this 
in this night tonight? People who post these things should be very careful because yes. once someone is cleared of your insanity. I watched Barbie. I loved it. I really did love it. Um, I don't want you guys to think that I'm a creep. First set of documents related to the case to become unsealed. My understanding is that more are anticipated to be revealed. The key moment in Barbie is when she goes from perfect beauty to bad breath, cellulite, and flat feet. So late last night, about 900 pages of files on late convicted child sex trafficker. And Yo, I got the gig 10 days ago. You want a perfect monologue? Yo, shut up. Joe Coy's off script jokes. Hold on to your popcorn, folks, because Joe Coy didn't just stick to the Golden Globe script. He went off-roading into the land of unscripted hilarity. Picture this. Joe Coy, armed with a mic and a cheeky grin, taking aim at TV shows, films, and celebrities like a comedic sharpshooter. First up, he throws a punchline at Oppenheimer. Now, I don't know if you've ever imagined nuclear physicists being the center of a stand-up joke, but Joe Coy dared to venture there. He's got this love-hate relationship with Oppenheimer, joking about needing an extra hour and comparing it to his never-ending New Year's resolution. Classic Joe Coy, turning nuclear science into a comedy gold mine. Then there's the unexpected twist of Barbie making an entrance into the laughter arena. Joe Coy doesn't just stop at acknowledging the plastic doll, he dives into the awkwardness of being attracted to a toy. It's like he's saying, hey, don't judge me, even plastic can be alluring. Cue the laughter or perhaps a few awkward glances. But wait, the comedy train doesn't stop there. Joe Coy takes a detour to deliver a zinger at the legendary Robert De Niro. He's got jokes about De Niro's recent parenthood at 80, bringing CGI into the mix. You can almost hear the audience's collective gasp and then the laughter echoing through the room. And of course, Joe Coy couldn't resist poking fun at Taylor Swift. He plays with the difference between the Golden Globes and the NFL, throwing shade at the fewer camera shots of Swift. It's like he's saying, Taylor, where did you go? A risky move, and the audience's response is a mix of chuckles and maybe a few cringes. In the comedy battlefield, some jokes soar to enthusiastic heights, earning laughter and applause. Others, well, let's just say they might have missed the mark, leaving an awkward silence in their wake. But that's the gamble every comedian takes, and Joe Coy, true to form, rolled the dice at the Golden Globes. Whether you were rolling on the floor or raising an eyebrow, one thing's for sure. Joe Coy brought the unexpected to the scripted glamour of Hollywood's big night. Not on the list, but in the documents, just because your name is on the documents doesn't mean that you have done anything criminally. It's hit or miss. Now, I love Joe Coy. He, to me, makes me just crazy because he's funny. Yeah. You know, so uh, I'm just going to say, you know, and there's been a lot of stuff recently. I don't know what I've done to anybody that he is as good as it gets when yeah. it comes to stand-ups. Yeah. And it is, not, it is not an easy... I swear, there's just more to go to. Here. Sorry about that. And what it does and what it needs. I don't know why they're in charge when I'm paying taxes. Get out of my uterus. The difference between the Golden Globes and the NFL, on the Golden Globes, we have fewer camera shots of Taylor Swift. I, I don't know. And they said I was on an island. They said, I'm, and I'm like, I don't go anywhere. But my friend, not every joke hit the bullseye. Some got a roaring applause while others, well, let's just say they met with a few raised eyebrows. It's the nature of comedy, a hit or miss affair, especially on a grand stage like the Golden Globes. Now, the post-show chatter is as diverse as a bag of mixed nuts. Some folks are high-fiving Joe Coy for his gutsy off-script approach praising the unpredictability he brought to the night. Others, though, might be shaking their heads, wondering if certain jokes went a tad too far. In the midst of this comedy chaos, there's a silver lining. Some acknowledge Joe Coy's ability to adapt and improve as the night rolls on. It's like watching a comedian find his rhythm and groove, turning the ship around after a rocky start. It's like eight days. I got eight days to come up with something, but I'm, I'm ready for the challenge. I can't wait, man. Or are they going to go with policies they're currently bringing to the table? Well, by all means, let's go after Joe. This is the best show of the year. I'm going to go ahead and call it. It's the first one and it's the best one. I don't understand. I don't understand why people who don't know how my body functions. We are here with the host, with the most. Joe Coy, what's up, man? Good to see you. Oh, good to see you. This, I mean, look at this. What an event. 
Are Americans going to vote on a candidate's past comments that we, we have to point out? I took everything. I took everything to heart, and, I, and, and he's right. I'm going to do exactly what he said. Whoopi Goldberg debunks rumors. Whoopi Goldberg just had to set the record straight, and she did it with that no-nonsense attitude we all love. So here's the lowdown. Some online rumor decided to drag her into the whole Jeffrey Epstein mess, claiming she's on his infamous flight log list. Whoopi being Whoopi didn't let that slide. I don't go anywhere, she declared on The View. You can almost imagine her raising an eyebrow and shaking her head. It's like, why would she be jet-setting when she got The View to rock? Turns out, there were these fake lists floating around the internet, naming her alongside A-listers like Beyonce, George Clooney, and even the Obamas. It's the kind of stuff you'd expect in a Hollywood thriller, not in real life. Whoopi didn't back down, though. I have nothing to hide, she boldly declared, and you've got to respect that. But here's the twist. The list was a phony. Even the internet overlords at X chimed in, saying, this is a fake list. Cue the dramatic reveal. Now the real deal court documents are out, and surprise, surprise, Whoopi's name isn't there. She's in the clear. But hold on to your hats, because about 250 more documents are on the way. The saga continues, and Whoopi's not one to let rumors and fake lists mess with her groove. She's got the view to run, after all. He can I'll relive just it. Themselves Turn on the television, girl. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm leaving you. It's uh, I'm tired. I haven't slept, but uh, and I'm I, I'm just enjoying the moment. You know what I mean? I I want to be prepared. The Joe has said yes. I know. I stepped in it several times. Here's what I'm doing about it. Here's how I've changed. Be uh, genuine when I when I talk about whatever I am, whatever it is that I'm talking about. So, yeah. I, Let's do this. So you, 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 you were on the island? I was, apparently, I, I don't know. I didn't say I was on the island. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't, but my nervous is a lot different from other people's nervous. Like, mine's more, like, excited. Well, you know, it's my rights. And, but, okay. <laughs> but I don't care. So they were all celebrating New Year's Eve, and I was home watching Oppenheimer, man. <laughs> yeah, I was. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.